Hi, my name is Piros Kassis and today we're going to see how we can create our own validation attributes. If you have seen other videos of mine, you know that I prefer Fluent Validations and that's what I actually use in my backend projects. But if I have to do some front-end stuff, validation with data notations, especially for simple validation, can become very handy. But uh, sometimes the default validation attributes don't cover our use case, so let's see how we create our own ones. So let's go to our solution. I have an API with a simple controller, a customer controller and uh, a post endpoint, which I accept uh, from the body of the request, the create customer request and I just return OK. Now my create customer request has only one property, a string and that's the name of the customer and I have decorated with the required um, attribute. So if I run my API and uh, I'll open Postman and I have already created a request and I remove uh, my name so it's empty. I'll hit send and uh, the default ASP.NET validation kicks in and I get uh, 400 and it says that one or more validation errors occurred and that the name field is required. Now although I talk about the front end um, projects, I'm too lazy to write HTML and create a page so I just um, use an API but you get the point it's the same uh, with a front-end application. So we have the required validation attribute that uh, comes out of the box with ASP.NET but let's say in uh, our API when we accept the customer's name we want to have the first name uh, then a dot and then the last name. I don't know why but that's the requirements of the project. So what we need to do is to validate that uh, we get that name in that format. Now we're not going to do all of that, we are just going to check if uh, the name contains a, a dot. So let's do that. I will create a new class and I will call that uh, contains uh, character attribute because, uh, and let me fix the typo. because it does not need to be specific to the dot we can pass any character that we want so first of all I'm going to create a private a read only char and that will be the character that we want to be in um, our name so value and then an error method so private read only string and that can be null and I'll call that error message and I'll have my attribute inherent from the validation attribute class okay you can go to this class to see what's there it's an abstract class, it has a lot of uh, things that we can override and it also has a property with the name error message. There is a lot of stuff that we can use from uh, the built-in validation attributes but let's keep it simple for now. And now I will create a constructor. Okay, and I'll have the default value of the error message to be null. And now if I check what methods I can override, as you can see there is an isValid method that we accept the value that we want to validate in the validation context, so I will override that. Okay, and now the first the parameter, the value, is the property that they will be decorated. So let's do some checks on that. We will say that if uh, the value is null or uh, the value is not a string so it's not a string we will consider that that's valid so we'll return validation result.success now if it's not null and if it is a string let's uh, cast that value to a string so let's say for example var string value equals with uh, the value casted as a string ok 
okay and now we can say that if uh, the string value contains the value that it's our character so let's rename that actually to character we will return a validation result success and if it's not valid we will uh, return a new validation result so return new validation result and uh, we can pass the error message in here so if we have an error message we'll pass that but if we don't we can say for example that a name must contain the character uh, but now that's very specific to the create customer request and the name property because we have that so let's do something else and let's see what that validation context is I can say validation context dot to see the properties and the uh, if you can see we have the display name the member name the object instance the object type etc so I'll say the display name which will be the same as the member name in our example since we don't have decorated uh, our name with a display name attribute okay i did that and now we should expect that that will return that the name must contain the character so let's go back to our create customer request and let's use that contains character attribute so what i need to say it's contains character so contains character and i need to pass the character and uh, as we said it's the dot so let's see that in action i'll hit the bug i'll open postman and i'll put my name and i'll hit send and as you can see name must contain dot so if i say dot cassios we get back okay now I will put a breakpoint in here and I'll hit send again just to take a look at the validation context so if we see that we get a display name its name the member name its name and also we have uh, the instance of the object that's a create customer request so we can see that uh, uh, instance of the object in here and we also get the object time that it's a create customer request so if you have a validation attribute only for one type or one base type you can access other properties of that instance if you need to uh, using some reflection if you need to use that in your validation rules so that was it for this one if you liked it please like and subscribe thank you for watching and have a nice one